What are we talking about? We're talking about Information Assurance Engineer in Aberdeen, Mar Maryland, MD. MD is Maryland, right? Yeah. All right, that's what we're talking about. This is a job from a company called 22nd Century Technologies, Inc. I used to get a lot of stuff from these guys. Looks like they're still sending me information, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about this job that they have. Okay. So it says, my name is Zoe, and I'm an IT recruiter at eTalent Network. So eTalent Network is a technical recruiter looking for jobs for these other people. Okay. We are a fast-growing staffing company in North America, the fastest-growing staffing uh, company in North America, and only firm of its kind that specializes in recruitment services. We are the sole agency that does recruitment for 22nd Century Technologies, Inc. So as a technical recruiter that's looking for me or you or whoever for this other company called 22nd Century Tech, this is how this works. And those people probably have a contract with a larger company. That's just how it works. Okay, so 22nd Century Technologies has a diverse portfolio and blah, 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 IT, security, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's keep going here. What is the job description? Information Assurance Engineer. I could talk a lot about this because this is something I've done for many years. It's in Aberdeen, Maryland. It's a full-time position, and they need you to have an interim secret clearance. You must have a CISSP or a CASP. So CASP is a IT certification from CompTIA that's the equivalent of a CISSP or is considered a, the equivalent of that certification. It's a high level certification. Okay, job, let's just kind of briefly go through the job description to get an idea of what is going on with this particular position. And I will have all of this stuff in the description below if you want to know more information about this, if you want to contact these people, if you're interested in this position and it's for you, then go ahead and look at the description below and the links and all that kind of stuff, contact information, and you'll be able to contact them. Okay, job description. Provides security engineer, engineering designs and implementation in all aspects of information assurance and information security, InfoSec engineering. And that means, uh, on a higher level, just to give you a layman's term of what that means practically, is that you'll be sitting down with with system engineers, uh, other system engineers, and uh, inf other administrators, system administrators, people who actually work on the system, put the system together. And you'll be also working with the actual system owners to come up with a plan of how to make a system more secure, or how to tighten up their firewall, or something like that. And to, nine times out of ten, they already have a firewall expert. The agency already has regulations on what they need, and you, as the information assurance engineer, are interpreting the policy and the laws from the federal government. That's usually how it goes. Okay, let's go to the next one. Oh, sorry. Assess and mitigate the system security threat risk throughout the program life cycle. Validate system security requirements, definitions, and analysis. Establish system security design. Implement security design in hardware, software, and data procedures. So in layman's terms, you'll be, you'll be part of them implementing. So this is telling me that they have a new system that is being implemented and they need a security person who's seen, these, who's seen networks before, who's, who knows, has a very solid idea of how systems work uh, and, and how they connect together securely. And then also, I saw another thing here, it says uh, mitigate system security threats and risks. So you'll be working with a team of, uh, of uh, information assurance vulnerability folks. Normally they have a whole nother group that does like vulnerability stuff. You're working with them and saying, okay, here's the regulations, almost like a lawyer. That's what an information assurance person does. They're almost like a lawyer because a lot of times they're interpreting the policies and the laws that are already in place. So they're interpreting that from something called NIST Risk Management Framework, um, which is 853 or other regulations and federal regulations, sometimes even the policy. So most of the time what happens is you walk in there, right? It sounds crazy. Like the, you would think that reading this that you're the one actually connecting everything together and you're the one running the Cisco router. Normally they tell you if you're doing that kind of stuff. But this from this very high level description, what I'm reading here, it sounds like they have a new system, they have security policies in place, but they want to make sure that as the system is being built, it is in line with uh, the policy that they already have, and the policy is in line with the federal government. And that's where you come in as an information assurance engineer. Okay, let's keep going here. 
verify security requirements, perform system certification and accreditation. That's a very old term, planning and testing. So this right here is telling me that you're going to go through what's called a uh, risk management framework process, which means that from the, from the beginning what you're doing is you're assessing the system to see if the system has a certain what level is the system? Is it a classified system? Is it a public system? Who's using it? How often are people using the system? That's how you classify the system. All that stuff is defined in NIST 837 Risk Management Framework. It actually tells you everything how to do it line by line. It's really, the difficulty is interpreting the, the lawyer speak that's in there. That's really the, the part that kind of trips people up. But it tells you exactly what to do and usually, like I said, the organization you're going to work for already has a policy in place that matches those federal agencies. But they need you to be there and say, okay, yep, this is what they're saying here. Nope, this right here, this isn't quite the process. We need to do this, that, or the other thing. Another thing that you do, this is telling me when they say certification and accreditation, is you're going through all the system security controls. You're making sure, and then this is a lot of work. You're going through all the security controls, of which there are hundreds, and you're saying, okay, do you guys have 14 character passwords? If they have passwords, they might have smart cards or whatever. Do you guys have uh, the banner, the, the Department of Defense banner, or the federal government banner that pops up when you log in? Okay, you guys got that. Do you guys have the appropriate uh, global policies uh, that are supposed to be implemented in all environments? Have you guys run this or that scan? Do you guys have a Nessus scan? Um, data have you run the Nessus scan on these systems things like that is what you're doing with certification and accreditation that's all part of it it's there's a lot more that goes into it but that's all part of it okay mandatory skills let's just kind of breeze through these and then I'll just give an overview um, demonstrate experience perform information assurance activities in support of software and system requirements implement and employ uh, the employment of information assurance requirements policies processes see this is all the stuff I already just said in accordance with it authorization and accreditation as part of the risk management process experience uh, with they want you to have experience with risk and vulnerability assessments running that's like running your Nessus scan running other scan uh, scanning the tools and then figuring out okay why is it why are all these highs coming up why are why are all these critical vulnerabilities coming up why are all these high vulnerabilities why are all these moderate vulnerabilities coming up and can we fix them how fast can we fix them? Who's going to fix them? Stuff like that. Uh, okay. Demonstrate the ability to provide guidance on intelligence for intelligence community. So this is like dealing with uh, high level security systems, uh, very secure um, systems dealing with intelligence community. Experience with security information and event management uh, systems, a scene. Correlation tools, scanning Nessus there it is and host based security systems so in addition to doing risk management framework which is a lot of documentation and coordination with other agencies and, and uh, the system owner and um, people who are doing the vulnerability scanning and patching in addition to that they're calling for you to actually analyze the data that's coming through on a scene which is a security information event manager that basically what it does is it looks at all the it, it gathers all the logs on a network. Um, the logs are like uh, events, anything that happens on the network, right? All the, not everything, but all the most relevant things like who logged in at, the, at what time, when the system shut down, was there an unauthorized login attempt? All of those things are, are put in one system. It's all funneled into one system and then there's like this, it looks like the matrix. It's like all these logs that are flowing by, right? But what the seam does is it sorts them and says, okay, this thing, you might want to pay attention to this because it looks like somebody tried to infiltrate this or that system, right? And so th there it looks like they're wanting you to actually have experience with that si that kind of system. A seam, uh, Nessus, and HBSS. Nessus is a, is a vulnerability scanner and then HBSS is a host-based security system that it, it's like a HBSS will uh, determine what level of security at a very intricate level a, a system is on like uh, if you have a workstation and that workstation doesn't have a host-based firewall or it has it's supposed to be turned on and it's supposed to filter out uh, certain things from the, the network HBSS does that kind of stuff alright 
And uh, that's it, guys. I'm going to put the description of who you can contact if you're interested in this job. I'm going to put that below. You, you, can, you might be interested in getting this job. You know, sounds sounds pretty decent. Sounds sounds like cool cool job that I would do. So go ahead and check that out. And if you're interested in knowing more, if you're interested in cybersecurity and getting involved with this, I've got a course and you can go there. Go to this link right here if you're interested. There's some free stuff there, but also there's some paid stuff that goes way deeper in the like how to get into this field and then how to actually make six figures or even how to work remotely in this field. Um, it, there's no magic to it. It's just hard work. I mean, I'm just going to tell you right there. If you think you're going to go through the course and then magically have a job, it's not how it works. It's hard work, but I tell you what path to take while you're navigating. It's only for very serious people, so you should know that. All right, guys, that's it. I'll catch you on the next one.